Hi, my name is Tulsi Noreen with the Dado Solution Engineering Team. In this video, I'll demonstrate and discuss the steps to take in deploying a virtual series appliance in Microsoft Hyper-V. The virtual series provide MSV with much flexibility when deploying series in Hyper-V or ESX environments. Rather than utilizing a Dado physical series, MSV can opt to deploy the solution as a VM. It is not uncommon to see virtual series deployed in hypervisors that have sufficient compute and storage. These environments can be within a client's premise or in a colo facility or bare metal cloud service provider, where partners have full control of the hypervisor. Before deploying a virtual series appliance on Hyper-V, a number of considerations should be made. Virtual Cirrus is only supported on Windows Server 2012 R2, Server 2016, and Server 2019. When deploying the Virtual Cirrus Operating System VHD, a data store with at least 60 gigs of free space is required for it to be properly unpacked. If you are deploying the one terabyte model of the Virtual Cirrus appliance, a one terabyte disk is required for the secondary drive of the appliance. The 2 terabyte will require a 2 terabyte disk, and so on. The compute requirements for the virtual series needs to be a minimum of 16 gigs of RAM and 4 virtual CPUs. Larger vSeries requires additional compute. I recommend visit the Dado Knowledge Base at help.dado.com for further guidance when setting up larger virtual series appliance. All right, we are ready to get started on deploying the virtual series on Hyper-V. The first place I need to visit is download.dado.com and navigate to the series virtual section and download the VHDX file. With the VHDX file downloaded on my Hyper-V host, I am now ready to begin the deployment. In the Hyper-V manager, select Action, New, and then Virtual Machine. Proceed to naming the virtual machine. We'll call ours vSeries. Next, we'll proceed in selecting a generation of this virtual machine by setting it to generation two. For the vSeries memory, we'll set it to 16, 384, or 16 gig. Next, I'll select the default virtual machine switch. For the hard disk, I'll select to use existing hard disk and point it to the VHDX file we downloaded earlier from the downloads page on the data website. I'll complete the wizard by clicking on Finish. Before we can start this virtual series, some additional configurations are needed. I'll right-click on the system and select Settings. Under Security, I want to uncheck Enable Secure Boot. When this option is enabled, it prevents the VM from starting. Next, I'll select the processor setting and change the number of virtual processors to four. And lastly, I need to create a disk to hold our backups. I'll select iSCSI controller, hard drive, and add. I'll proceed to create a new virtual disk. I'll set it to a fixed size. This is the recommending settings when creating a virtual disk for any appliance. I'll name it vSeries Storage and change this location to be the same of the virtual series. Next, I'll set the size to 1024 gig or one terabyte. I'll proceed to the summary page and then click on finish. We are ready to power on our virtual machine. I'll right click and connect to the VM, then click on the power button. It takes a couple of minutes for the appliance to reach a readiness state, after which the console screen will reflect an IP address. We are now ready to register and configure the virtual appliance. I'll navigate to the appliance IP address in Chrome. When you purchase the virtual series from the data store, an authorization code will be emailed to you. Go ahead and enter the code here. I'll validate the code by clicking on the validate button. With the code validated, we can proceed to update the appliance. All Dado appliance follow an update process during the registration to get the latest security updates 
as well as feature enhancements. Updates may take 10 to 15 minutes to process, allow ample time for this process to finish. I can now register the appliance. The device name field corresponds to the host name of the appliance. Let's call our appliance virtual test. For a username, you'll want to select a name outside of admin, administrator, and root. These names are reserved. I'll enter Tulsi as a user and enter a very strong password. For email alerts, I'll enter my Dato email. You'll want to choose an email address for your service desk where you typically send alerts to. Time zone is important as the appliance uses this value to determine when to initiate a backup. Picking the wrong time zone will offset your backup schedule. I'll leave it as America, New York, Eastern Time. Lastly, I need to check the box to allow the installation of third-party software and drivers. Data Virtual Service runs a Ubuntu operating system and require update for the OS and its components. I'll leave the device migration option on check as we are not migrating data from another Dato appliance to this one. I'll finalize the registration by clicking on complete registration. All right, so that's it. We now have a virtual service in Hyper-V registered and ready for use. The yellow banner you are seeing at the top is informing us that we want to pair a hypervisor for screenshot verification. We can use either ESX or Hyper-V for this. Since I'm running this on Hyper-V, I'll go ahead and add my Hyper-V host to this virtual service. For the connection name, I'll keep it simple and call it Hyper-V. For the server, enter the IP address of the Hyper-V host. In my case, it's 172.18.1.41. We're now ready to provide a username and password. A full admin is required as this user will have full scope to perform restores. I'll enter the local creds for my Hyper-V host. Proceeding to the summary of options, I'll finalize by clicking on Finish to add a connection profile. A final item we must configure is to adjust the configuration we just added for screenshot verification. I'll click on Configure, then Hypervisor Connections. From here, I'll simply check the radio button used for screenshot verification. When a system is ready to run through its boot verification process, it'll use this hypervisor connection to offload the VM. And just like that, we have reached the end of configuring our virtual service appliance on Hyper-V. I hope you found this video informative. Thanks for watching.